All right, we got the spoilers here for both chapters 54 and 55 this month, so I'm just gonna be going over them here now since, you know, it could be a couple days until we get the actual chapters, right? Of course, feel free to take this as a spoiler warning, you know, in case you just don't wanna know what happens yet. So it's that time again, we're getting right into the start of the next fight and we're getting a lot of answers here, but also a lot of questions, right? I mean, just so many reveals this month and I have to admit, I can definitely see round seven turning out to be my favorite round yet. Just all the buildup and hype it has after reading these leaks is just so insane so let's just get into it guys we have a lot to talk about here all right so chapter 54 is called substitute and it starts off with the arena is filled with calls for buddha buddha stares forlornly at the misery cleaver's handle when a little bird lands on it and starts to cry buddha realizes that he wasn't the only person who loved zero and that there are others those he helped long ago crying for him so i think it's confirmed here zero is for sure dead right and if he is i think this would be the first exception that we've seen to the rule that regardless of who dies in the ball and if one dies then both the fighter and the valkyrie die too but it looks like that isn't the case here since we're seeing buddha alive even after zero goes out all right the next bit says brunhild and gold run up to buddha after he leaves and he collapses as he's being carried away by the attendants he says he wants a cola flavored buddha chup making brunhild laugh buddha then asks brunhild if she thinks her plan will be realized to which she responds that she's one step closer to humanity's salvation buddha replies there you go again all uptight and repeats the bit from chapter 44 about liking Brunhild's eyes filled with worldly desire before coughing up blood and getting carried away to the sick bay. So this is interesting, it doesn't look like there's any bad blood between Buddha and Brunhild and of course that makes sense but it was also in chapter 44 where we saw Buddha being very suspicious towards Brunhild and what her motives could be. And it also looks like the gods are actually allowing Buddha to recover so this is interesting because I guess this means Buddha actually won. I mean I know we knew he won but I think there was reason to assume the result would have been overturned or avoided because you know it's not like buddha isn't a traitor anymore right just because he won the fight it's not like buddha's now on good terms with the gods so maybe we'll see the plot thickened over time with what happens to buddha hereafter beelzebub is throwing all the data he had collected on hajin into a fire when odin approaches him and says i knew this was your doing biel ignores him but hugin and moonin taunt him calling him a creep odin prepares to speak silencing the ravens and says i will not spare anyone who disrupts this fight my long held desire. His aura is enough to send Biel's documents flying and Biel finally looks at Odin and says intriguing. So if you guys have been following my channel for a while you already know I'm always trying to find ways to figure out what exactly Odin's been planning right? It's almost like we're playing checkers and he's playing like 40 chess or whatever but it looks like we're finding out more about him here when he refers to the tournament as my long held desire. So I think the biggest takeaway we're getting here is that Ragnarok is what Odin's always wanted and that he won't allow anyone to get in the way of it. And I'm really curious now because he's straight up challenging Beelzebub here. And if you guys have already seen my Beelzebub video where I went into the guidebook, then you already know Beelzebub is just a straight up savage. And I think someone like Odin would recognize that about him. So I wonder, you know, what's the play here? What is Odin trying to achieve by taunting, if not challenging Beelzebub? Hermes, Ares, and Zeus discuss the results of round 6. Hermes remarks that if humanity wins again, the odds will be in their favor. Zeus says that they need to win by any means possible and Hermes asks about who will fill Buddha's slot. So we're finally getting into who will replace Buddha now that round 6 is over and again, it looks like the score is 3-3, there's no debating that here, at least with the Greek gods. Ares replies that it can't be any half-hearted god and Hermes sneakily eyes him. Ares realizes Hermes' intent and has an intense back and forth in his head lasting all of a quarter of a second, ultimately making up his mind to fight for the gods. Alright, so I know we need someone to replace Buddha, but technically speaking, the gods do need two more extra fighters, not just one. So I'm glad they're here trying to figure out the immediate issue at hand, right? But we're just gonna run into this problem again until the gods can, you know, figure out who else is gonna step up. So yeah, Ares would be a very uh, interesting pick. Ares tries to raise his hand and say he'll go, but before he can finish, Hades interrupts him and says, I shall go. Ares, Hermes, and Zeus are all shocked and Zeus asks what's gotten into him. Hades gets up, says Zeus's question is foolish and takes off his eye patch, crushing it in his hand. Hades then says this is revenge for Poseidon. Poseidon. So here it is guys, representing the gods for round 7 is Hades. And I've been saying this for a while now, right? It was either Hades or Beelzebub, just given the way we had them both introduced around the same time, it just made sense to expect either of them to step up next, but it's finally happening. Hades is now officially fighting in Ragnarok. Alright, so we're getting into chapter 55 now, it's called Taboo, and it starts with Brunhild heads back to her chambers with gold with an intense look on her face. Brunhild thinks about how now is humanity's chance to take the lead on the gods, making 
making her eyes more intense. So with the score now 3-3, even I'm curious if the gods will break the tie again because it was only when Shiva won that the gods took the lead after drawing in round 4. However, when they arrive, they see another Brunhild standing there, puzzling goal, Brunhild calls out Nostradamus' name while popping a vessel asking what he's doing with her clothes. Nostradamus takes off his disguise while Gull stares at him fixedly calling him the prophet of the centuries. So we're getting another huge reveal here and it's apparently Nostradamus. And he's also a shapeshifter as well so this is really curious. This is now the second shapeshifter that we know of after Loki. Nostradamus clears his throat and says allow me to prophesy the winner of Ragnarok will be the gods. Gull and Brunhild both buy it which Nostradamus loses his cool over and teases them for. Gull gets angry at him and complains about him to Brunhild. Brunhild calls him the most unpleasant man in human history and adds that unfortunately he is also insanely strong. So I think he's just teasing them here but to predict that humanity loses even if he's just joking it's definitely something to think about. Brunhild also calls him insanely strong which would make sense of course he's part of the chosen 13. Gull doubts this but Brunhild confirms it though she also says that if he goes too far with his pranks she'll send him back to Helheim. Nostra complains saying the beasts of Helheim did horrible things to him but Brunhild calls him out and replies that he could have killed the guards whenever he felt like it and gone back out of there. Nostra nonchalantly replies I guess Gull wonders why a human was in Helheim and Brunhild begins her info dump. So according to Brunhild she summoned him out of Helheim even saying he's so strong he could have escaped when he wanted. Nostradamus was the only person who broke the gods taboo and was thrown into Helheim for it. His crime destroying the Bifrost, the gate of rainbow and darkness that connects Valhalla and Helheim. Nostra says he was just wondering what happened if he broke it thoroughly spooking Gull. So somehow at some point during his life Nostradamus was able to destroy the Bifrost that connects Valhalla and Helheim and was then punished for it by the gods sent to spend the rest of his life in the underworld. Brunhild then asked again what Nostra wants to which he replies that he was wondering if it was his turn yet. Brunhild says his turn will come much later since he is their joker. So despite how desperate she is to break the tie now and take the lead, it's like Brunhild is saving her strongest pieces for last, right? Which just begs the question, how strong is Nostradamus that she's giving him this special treatment? Because even when Raiden went out to, you know, break the draw, it's not like we got to see Brunhild even consider sending out Nostradamus. And this is now the second chance she has to take the lead and still she's holding back until the later rounds. So again, I'm curious how strong he has to be. Just then, Brunhild gets a notification on her device saying that Hades is next. Brunhild kicks Gull and Nostradamus out and picks the ruler who began everything, reasoning that it should be a ruler for a ruler. Alright, so we're seeing Brunhild choose her pick against Hades now, saying it'll be a ruler for a ruler. Meanwhile, a human stumbles into Ares and Hermes' VIP section, mistaking it for his waiting room. The two gods don't notice him at first and keep talking, just then the human plops down on Hades' seat. Ares tries to get the human out of the VIP room, but the moment he tries touching him, he feels light and topples face first. Hermes tries to get closer to him, but he turns to him and says, humble yourself. This human is Chen Shin Huang, the first emperor of China and the one chosen to fight in round 7. He then resumes his seat, saying that wherever I am, that is my throne. So representing humanity in round 7 is gonna be Chin, and I'm so glad I called this back in my predictions for round 7 video. I mean, it made sense. We would be seeing Hades or Beelzebub set up for the next round, but I'd also assumed it'd go down exactly as Brunhild put it, you know, a ruler for a ruler. Because honestly, I think it's fair to assume Hades is at least as strong as Poseidon. And that's just at the least, for all we know he's probably stronger than Zeus. So it just makes sense to pair him up against someone with a similar status like Chin. And honestly, I can totally see this being my favorite round so far in the story for me, so I really hope it doesn't disappoint. I mean, there's just so much on the line, right? Because just like at the start of round 5, this is gonna determine who takes the lead, and not only that, if it ends up being Chin who wins, I think you can argue that that's the biggest win for humanity yet. And honestly, I don't know who I want to win here. I think they both have so much potential for later events in the story, so this can really go either way for me. Alright guys, and that's gonna be the end of the video. If you're interested, make sure you subscribe for more Record of Ragnarok content. I'll be reviewing both the chapters when they get translated, so make sure you're around for that. Also, let me know in the comments how you feel about all this. We just got so many reveals here. It's like every chapter since chapter 50 has been on like a non-stop high. So again, let me know in the comments, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great day.